Yeah. And that's where I started. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk yeah. all about this stuff. Okay. I think we're rolling. Okay. Hey, guys. Dan the Wolfman here with the one and only Sugar Rashad Evans here right after the, fo the fights on uh, FX. And, uh, you know, you're a fellow Michigander like myself. Yeah. So I want to talk about those early times to begin with. And, and how you got started, you know, I originally started with Dan Severin. Today I saw you tape a, a special for, um, uh, for Fuel TV, and, and you threw out a name there. One of my old training partners, Noe Hernandez, yeah. Matt Torres. You know, I was training with those guys uh, back for Noe's um, fight against Chuck Liddell, which was Chuck's first fight in the UFC, which most people haven't seen. That was a great fight. And uh, so I want to kind of, and Crown Boxing Gym. So yeah. I want to know about how you kind of got started and, and all that. Well, I got started with Matt Torres. We started training this gym in uh, in, um, in Lansing, Michigan. This old beat down building. Oh yeah. And, and Noah Hernandez was a big part of the gym too as well. And those guys, they would go to um, to Iowa and train with some of the guys with um, with uh, Dan Sarah. I mean not Dan Sarah. Mark Hansen. Mark, no, uh, Mark Hansen. And Matt 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 Hughes okay. and, and Militish Camp. They would go train with the guys Militish Camp. So they had the first you know big fight experience going up there and training with those guys. And they brought all that knowledge back to Michigan to where I was. And um, after I graduated from college, I was looking to get into something, and I met Matt Torres. Okay. So it was just like a natural fit. Yeah, I called that place the dungeon. Once it I, was, I, right? Noe showed me against the wall. I went for a guillotine, and he goes under my leg for that pickup, right, and slams me into the wall, and, like, I, I missed a rusty nail Dude, by, like, that much. That was, that was the no-holds-barred days. Yeah, that's what it's called NHB. That's yeah, called NHB. Yeah, it's not nice and safe and on TV like it is yeah. nowadays. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we actually started training at, at Dan Simmons' gym, too, because, okay. um, after a while, you know, me and Matt Torres, we just beat the hell out of each other so much. Mm -hmm. We needed some new meat, so we went out to train at Dan Severn's gym. And at the time, Dan Severn was traveling so much because he was still actively fighting. And um, Matt Torres started taking over some classes from him. And that's how we uh, started being affiliated with that team too much okay. and going there and training with those guys a lot. Is, is that, was Danger Zone the first place you fought? Or was, yeah, was Danger Zone. Zone Danger Zone in Angola, Indiana. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, what, what about Crown Boxing Gym? Because that's actually the gym yeah. that I, 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 one of my first boxing gyms right. where I trained for my, my fight against Jeremy Horn, um, where I was doing my boxing. And then I've, I've seen you in there before. Yeah. Well, after Matt Torres, he, he went away for a little bit. Uh, he, he moved away for a while. And I didn't really have any place to train. Mm -hmm. And I always remember Noe Hernandez telling me, listen, if you want to get your hands right, you got to go to Crown Boxing. Okay. So I went to Crown Boxing. At first, those guys were kind of standoffish because it's just, you know, for boxers the boxing, only. They, they didn't and, know about the MMA. They, they didn't know anything about it. So they, they didn't look at it. They didn't respect the sport of MMA. So when I first came in there, I had to pretend like I was just, you know, wanting to get some experience boxing. And then um, I befriended no uh, Joaquin, Joaquin Rodriguez. And Joaquin Rodriguez, you know, I told him I had this fight coming up on, on the Ultimate Fighter mm -hmm. show. And then he said that he'll take me on and he'll be my coach. Yeah, yeah, and then and your hands look great. You know, I I, li I liked your moving and moving around yeah. and chucking on, on on the Ultimate Fighter that Matt Hughes gave you crap for. I think if you can move, you're just jealous that you can't move like that. You know what? That, and that, I took a lot of heat for that. And still to this day, people look at me as a cocky, arrogant fighter. But you know what? I, I always want to compete and have fun. And um, the person you see right now you're talking to is not the actual person who competes. Yeah. It's a different side, and that's what fighting does. It brings out that other person. That's why fighting it, it, um, it, it makes me be a different person because I can't. I'm not that kind of person in life. But in a fight, I can be whatever I want to be. Yeah, and and of course, you know, this is the early training, and then he then he went on to Greg Jackson's, yeah. and now you kind of helped form the Black Zillions, and you guys are doing great. You got Mario Sperry with yeah. you. I mean, Mario Sperry and Bustamante are the guys behind the Brazilian top team. I think that's just like, wow, yeah. is that machine's been teaching you and rolling with you and stuff. And that's that's the cool. crazy part because uh, and Mario, Mario's a great people. Yeah. With, with Mario, me and Matt Torres used to watch the videos yeah. of Mario, and, and, and that's how I learned my jiu-jitsu. I learned my first basis yeah. of jujitsu watching Mario Sperry DVDs. So now, bing, you punch yeah. him in the face. Bing. <laughs> yeah, you got the DVD too. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got the VHS too. Yeah. What are you talking yeah. about? That was a DVD. Yeah, man. that's right. It was VHS. So, um, you know, that's great. And now you're doing a lot of uh, hosting here at FX, Fuel, and Fox. You're doing a lot of commentating. You know, yeah. I hear your mom likes it quite a bit. Yeah, my mom loves it, man. And, but it's something like this. I, I'm only able to fight for a certain amount of time. You know, and I want to be able to leave the sport before the sport leaves me. 
So this is something I definitely would like to develop and fall back on after I can't fight no more. Well, good. Before we get into the fights tonight, I want to I want to ask you about 52. Is some of that yeah. your brother or someone who was teaching you some jailhouse rocks and 52 oh, hands? Daniel 52 Marks. Daniel Marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, guys. <laughs> yeah, my boy Daniel Marks. I've been I've been knowing him since like uh, 2003, 2004, and um, you know I went out there in Maryland and, and trained with him, and I went out to New York City, City and trained with him, and you know there's a lot of stuff that I've seen growing up in New York, you know, in uh, New York State, and uh, it's something I've always been interested in, and I met Daniel, and then, you know, there's different aspects of it that, that I actually still use, but it's uh, it's definitely interesting. You see somebody, like a really good 52 practitioner, yeah. and you're like, you know, it could really work. It seemed like it influenced your movement and your style. Yeah. I mean, in a couple fights, you can see it. Uh, uh, maybe, against, was it against Forrest? Yeah. You can see, you know, yeah. you can see that movement there, and, yeah. and I, think that, I think that's great. You know? Yeah, I think I think there's there's um, I'm gonna start using it a lot more because I really just been so technically in my box. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of areas where I can use it and open up. Uh, you know, have some openings and throw some elbows and go down yeah. low and come up with a high kick exactly. again would be nice. And, exactly. You know, and uh, you know that's cool. You know about 52. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I actually actually um, at a small event, Ultimate Athlete Magazine, I was writing for years ago. Uh, I, I went to some training right before the fights, and uh, you remember Homer Moore fought like yeah. twice in the UFC. I'm All right, so Homer Moore from Arizona's down there, and there's like this old cat with him, right? And I'm kind of watching him, and I go up to him, and I'm like, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I mentioned 52 or Jailhouse Rock yeah. or whatever. He looks at me like, white boy, where did you? Yeah, where you how do you know from? what I'm doing over here? Yeah. He was just moving a little bit. And I was like, so actually, I thought that I was like, wow, that's you know, I like all these obscure styles and Kali and system and how to put in different things in the MMA game because it's a big world out there. It's a huge and, world. And yeah. you can, uh, you know, a lot of martial arts, a lot of cultures, and you can take uh, that's what mixed martial arts means. You can take a little of this, a little of that, put yeah. some seasoning, your own flavor on it, and, and I think that's. That's what you've done, and, and hopefully you'll continue to do even sure. more of that. For sure. And um, do you have any idea what's coming up for you, fighting wise? You know, um, right now I'm just gonna just you know I've been I've been healing my body up. I did two fights back to back, and I was you know had some bumps and bruises from the first fight, and then you know uh, even from the even from the uh, Tito Ortiz fight, I had a broke hand, and then I went into the Phil Davis fight and had some bumps and bruises from that camp, and then even with the Bones fight, that was a, that was a brutal fight for me, and um, I'm just kind of resting up a little bit and seeing what the UFC throws at me. Well, um, you know, you've always been a guy who's used your speed and never minded going against heavyweights yeah. and stuff, but have you ever given any consideration to maybe dropping a middleweight? I thought about it, and then I thought about how hard that weight cut is. Yeah. And I, I used to wrestle 174 in college, okay. and I would cut so much weight on a continuous basis, and I was like, you know what? If I ever, can, if I ever compete again, I'm not cutting weight like that. Because... What ends up happening is like the philosophy is, oh, wow, well, you go down to a lower weight and then you'll be stronger. Not necessarily. Some people go down to a lower weight and they're actually weaker. Okay. And I felt like when I, when I was the best athlete I could be in college wrestling is when I wrestled closer to my natural weight. So that's what I try to do in fighting and I try to compete at my natural weight. I may go to 185 and, get, and not be the same fighter yeah. because I may be cutting too much weight. And yeah, I don't say you need to, but I'm yeah. saying if Anderson manages to beat Chael, it's like... Nah, yeah, I mean, and, I know, think that'd be a great super. I always thought right. I never, I never. People talk about super fights. I was like, that, that'd be an interesting. Fight. You know, and Anderson, somebody I would love to fight because when it all said and done, whether you win or lose, to compete against the best in the sport is really what it's all about. You know, if, if I can walk away from my career and say that I competed against some of the best in my sport in that time era, then then I then I can wrap up and say I had a really great career. So if the opportunity comes and um, th that fight happens. Yeah, I would drop the 185 to fight. You know, I mean, why not? Or maybe catch weight. I mean, yeah, maybe it could happen. Sure, maybe at yeah. the end of his career, he goes, "Yeah, I want a former light heavyweight champion." To yeah, compete. sure, for sure, man. So, uh, what about tonight's fights? What did you think? The fights on FX, the prelims on uh, Fuel TV were excellent. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a great night of fights. Um, you know, Greg Manor and, and, and the Clay Guida fight it was not the fight that everybody was expecting. Uh, Clay Guida's game plan, I believe, got away from him. I believe he was trying to move effectively, but then what happened was he wasn't doing anything off of the movement. He had some good pop shots and he landed some clean shots, but then after that, he really needed to put the pressure on with a takedown or something to kind of marry his movements together with the, with the shots. But Gray Maynard, um, you know, he didn't give too much into his frustration, frustration even though he started to. 
he just kept pressure and action, and then he got the W because he landed some effective shots, and then he even had that great choke that he almost got. Yeah, and, yeah, and Gray is a guy, I mean, he went for it there. That was yeah, a beautiful did. sprawl into the guillotine. Um, you know, he's a guy that, obviously, you're, you're a little favorite favoritism towards because he used to be roommates. <laughs> I try not to be. I try not to be <laughs> biased, but that's like, watching him fight makes me sick. I get, I what, get did, what do you think about him frustrated? And I mean, he looked like he was trying to get adopted by, by someone last name Diaz. Yeah, you know, you know uh, the, the fingers and the little bit of swearing I think was going on. Yeah. And come at me and put his chin out. It took three solid punches. Yeah. I mean, he's got a beard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what, I, what I didn't want, I didn't want him to get too emotional about it and then leave himself open and get caught with a kick. I felt like at some points where I got kind of nervous, like when he switched his southpaw, mm -hmm. I felt like he was doing it so he can mix up and take a shot, a fast shot, but then his defense wasn't really right when he switched up left, and that's how he got caught with that high kick. Yeah. You know, but um, I, I thought Gray fought, Gray fought the best fight that he could considering the circumstances and considering what uh, you know what he was facing with, with um, Clay Guida moving around the way he was. Yeah. It's, it's tough to fight anyone like that. I think that's the problem. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and I thought Guida did good in certain rounds. So. Yeah, for sure he did. I mean, I thought he, he, he got the first two rounds, was moving a lot, but he, he landed some clean shots. So what about I mean what about Stout Fisher three that didn't disappoint? No, Stout Fisher three did not disappoint. But like I I, I kind of agree with Dan was saying. Mm. Dan was saying that he felt like uh, Fisher won. It was a lot closer than what, what the judges saying. And uh, I kind of felt like like um, Dan was right in some respects because I felt like um, Fisher landed a lot of clean the shots. Harder punches. Yeah, he, he did. He did. The punches he landed, a lot that of clean landed shots. are just not clean, yeah. but they're they're physically damaging. And, and that's and, and a couple times that made it look like he was winning a stand-up battle, battle was that after he landed a few clean shots, Stout would try to take him down. And whenever a guy does it, it kind of looks like the other guy mm -hmm. is is winning the exchange and he doesn't want to stand up with him. So that was, that was the kind of things that made me think that it was a lot closer than what it really was. But hats off to Stout, who um, showed evolution in his game and showed that being the biggest difference between this fight and the first fight they ever fought. For sure, he's got wrestling now. Now he's got to learn to get comfortable to ground and pound from there, to pass guard from there, to, right. to not just go, okay, I'm stealing the round yeah. last minute. Um, so, you know, and then Brian Ebersole. I think he's a beast at 170, and he's talking about cutting down to 55. Yeah, I was hearing that at, at the tail end of that interview. Um, I think he, he definitely has, you know, a, a chance at 170. Yeah, you know, I but, don't but, think he has to. But physically speaking, you, you look at his body, he doesn't look really that strong. I mean, those guys at 170, when they start, when he gets to a certain point, yeah. those guys are kind of like, they're kind of they kind of built, yoked, you know? Yeah, yeah they're kind of yoked. So maybe him dropping down at 155 would, would have behooved him a little more just because of the fact that he's taller, he has a leverage, and now he can use all that experience and he can use his strength that he I has. I think he'll be right up there. You know, oh, man, at, one, at 155, right yeah. he'll be tough. As, as long as it doesn't affect his cardio too bad, if yeah. he gets the right dietitian, sure. that kind of stuff. You know, you never know how that's going to go, but... You know, I think it could go really well for him. Yeah, you know, I, I was impressed. We're talking about the fights tonight. I was impressed with Cub Swanson. I've been watching Cub yeah. Swanson since he came to Jackson's gym, and uh, he's just developed as a striker, and he's somebody who's very creative with a striking, and I love it. Yeah. I love it. He, he did Beautiful. the, uh, yeah, he did he did the, uh, the Sandchild Kingstar. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where See, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. But that was the, he threw that's the, the hand down and yeah, came up with the right high kick. kick. But, the, but then just being able to, to find, uh, you know, Ross Pearson coming in after he had his leg with that left hook. I mean, that was a money shot. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of kind of like a sinker hook because he hit it and it was down angled and then he back pivoted his right foot oh, at the same man, time. Oh man, it was just um, beautiful timing. There was like a, a strike force knockout that happened with uh, the English fighter. Um, uh, but anyway, it's a beautiful punch. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, so I'm glad you're enjoying things here. You know? Yeah, I love it. You know, and the this, Black Zillings is going good. Yeah, the Black Zillings are going good. We're growing as a team, and um, you know, there's there's a lot of hype around us. But at the same time, you know, we're taking the growing pains. You know, we don't win every single fight, but at the same time, we're growing. We're growing, and um, our team. We got a lot of up and coming guys that are developing, and uh, I'll tell you what, we are definitely going to be a force. We're definitely going to be one of those camps that people are going to be like, wow, I want to go there, or wow, this is a camp that we need to watch out for. You know, because we have such great coaches, and, and the coaches are the anchor for the talent that's coming up. You know, we run, we run it really well there, and uh, we have a great facility, and it's uh, headed by ASM management. You know, Glenn Robinson is, um, you know, my manager, and he's probably, you know, one of the best managers in the game. You know, he's a real-life Jerry Maguire. Yeah. I'm telling you, this guy, he cares about all of his fighters, and he treats them. He has, like, he tell, he's, he, has, he has two kids, but then he says, I had two kids, 
but then I went and adopted 20 more. Nice. And that was, so that's, you feel like he actually cares oh, not yeah. just about the fish almighty dog. Nah, not, not at all, not at all. You know, he's a successful businessman outside of um, of doing the MMA management and stuff like that. It seemed like he only did the MMA management just kind of something for fun because he kind of fell into it just because he wanted to help out some of his friends. So you like things in Florida? Oh, I love Florida. You're coming out here a lot, though. Same thing yeah, with Kenny Florian. I know. Maybe you guys should open up a, a Evans Florian hey, I'm, mixed I'm, martial arts center. You guys should do that and, and hire me so I, could, I have a job so I can do That's teach. what I'm <laughs> 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 you know, I think we should set that up. Yeah, well, I'm down with it. I'm all right, guys. With. So go to ProMMANow.com for all your information. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube page, Dan the Wolfman one if you can. Any, anywhere someone can hit you up on Twitter. Or yeah, just like hit that. me up at uh, Twitter, uh, at Sugar Shot Evans. Or you can hit me up on Instagram, SugarFly79. Yeah, and, and talk to your cable provider, satellite providers, guys. You're missing out if you don't have fuel TV. The prelims are amazing. The post-fight shows are amazing. You know, the weigh-ins, there's specials, there's pride shows, there's all kinds of stuff. So, anyway, thanks for shot. Thank you, I appreciate it.